it's kind of hard for me to explain to people what I do because I do so many things. So uh, I'm a writer, director, and a photographer. So my work is very visual. Give This Heart a Pen came from a brainstorming session I had with my teammate. He said we should do some original content, and he said Sophia would be great to work with, and I've been friends with Sophia for years, we're both poets. And I thought about her book called Somebody Give This Heart a Pen, and this image of a heart made out of notes just came to my mind. When looking at cameras for shoots, I'm looking for something that's easy to operate, first of all. Um, light, the, the weight is a very important factor, and I need it to be fast. I need it to be easy to maneuver. It just needs to be straightforward. When I first saw Anheld, the EOS C70, I felt it was a small but mighty camera, quite reliable and durable. I noticed the buttons as well on the sides, and I thought, great, they're not spread out too far all over the camera. I could put my hand around the grip and reach some. The media button being on top, love that. I like a camera that allows me to get into awkward positions, especially ones that allow me to get into my fly on the wall type of vibe. And the fact that the screen could come out and allow me to shoot from behind a ladder, uh, a lot of cameras don't really offer that versatility. And the EOS C70 is definitely versatile in that regard. Colour is very important to me, especially for this project. And I needed to make sure people got the full essence of all the palettes that we were going to work with, from Sophia's skin tone to locations, the fabrics especially. I've been a huge fan of Canon's colour science from day one. So when I saw the C-Log 3, I was really impressed. But also seeing what the Rec 709 lot on top, I said, yeah, perfect. I didn't have to think about doing too much in post and knowing that the color was true, the highlights were kept clean. I think Canon cameras like natural light as much as I do. So part of the film was to make sure we show not just the dreamy landscapes, but also the greatness of London and stuff. So nighttime was a chance to bring a different mood to the table, but also for me to see what this camera could do at the same time. But for once, the camera did most of the work. I could be in the middle of a street without any direct light source, and I can see everything. It's amazing. This is my first time using an RF lens, and a whole set of them like that, to be honest. It was a really interesting experience. They were very just sharp. There was a difference for sure. The image stabilization was unlike anything else. It's smooth, it's subtle, and when I'm watching back the footage as well, you know, I'm sure people are gonna watch what we made and be like, did you use a gimbal for the whole thing? No. This is majority handheld, and that's gonna be interesting to a lot of people. Using the RF lenses was a really great experience for me, but even better was knowing that thanks to the 071 times adapter, I could bring in my old kit, my old lenses, and still allow it to have a presence on the set and a use. It doesn't really stop me from going forward with what I've got, but also moving forward with what's coming out. It's actually allowing us to have more fun and say there is no lens we can't use. The film needed to be very mobile. I don't see poetry as a stationary medium, so everything was going to require movement. So I thought, what is a medium that best suits that parkour? I said, yeah, cool. And Georgia came to mind because I'm really big on female representation in parkour. My first reaction to the 120 FPS was how clean it was. I was impressed. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I could do it seamlessly, flipping through the camera settings on a touchscreen from 30 to 120 FPS, easy. The gimbal side of things was interesting because I wanted to see how this would fit. And 
I believe when I was running with the parkour element, I was straight in there. The flip screen allowed me to really run with it at an awkward angle, so I could see where I was going and see the shots. I could tell that it was in focus. It felt like a camera that was made to just go. The ND filters and the sound recording abilities were two of my favorite things on this camera for sure. I love the fact that I haven't got to screw on an ND onto the top of a lens. It saves me time and effort. So being able to click through the various stops of ND, beautiful. Now to do the sound, the fact that I'm getting mini XLR inputs, brilliant. It means that I don't have to worry about an external recorder. Everything can go straight into the camera and there's no worries about if it was recorded or not. So the AF face tracking feature on the ESC70, it just kept Sophia in focus all the time. So I was, I was a huge fan of that. It allows you as a solo shooter or a director to focus on what's going on in the shot. The performances, the subjects, without having to worry about focus shifting. You know, it took, it took a lot of work off my hands. Another thing I really found interesting was the touchscreen autofocus. I had fun with it, if anything. I had more fun with that feature than I thought I would, because I could have a shot that I thought was gonna have everything in focus. And then I said, actually, no, I wanna, right between a bollard and her in the street, it, it was just really fun to use. But when I did go into manual focus, it felt a lot easier than my past experiences. You could tell if it was in focus or not with the, with the box. So if it was green, it's in focus. If it's not, it goes white. So it works with me, it's still taking the load off my hands. The first people I would recommend this camera to are solo shooters, shooting directors for sure. People that work in documentary, people that work in short film, and people that work in music videos. This camera's for you. If you're a small crew person, this camera's for you. If you want to do it all yourself, this camera is most definitely for you. I think it's a camera that will allow you to think beyond limitations of most cine cameras. And that is a bonus, because you don't want to be limited by that medium you're trying to tell a story through.